Rich killing the beats. Rich killing the beats. Rich killing the beats. Ten seventeen artist Gucci Man's um artist passes away at I believe twenty six, was she? I want to say she was twenty six. Oh, let me pull it. Yeah, she was twenty six. She passes away from an overdose. Um and people were um I bring this up because the speculation around the curse of ten seventeen. <laughs> like right. A lot of the stuff that um, a lot of the artists that came from out of there are either dead or in jail. So um, let me read this. Did it pop up? Seventeen thirty eight. <laughs> oh, so she passes away. Charleston White has some crazy things to say about her too. I want to bring that up too. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring that up, and we. I want to. Uh, I want to Hold on, give me one quick save on that. So it says here, let me see where is that. Texas rapper Enchanting ha has tragically died at the age of 26 after being taken off life support following an alleged drug overdose. The up and coming singer, whose real name is Channing Nicole Larry, was signed to Gucci Mane's famous 1017 label earlier this year ahead of her untimely uh, young death. The news of Nicole's passing was confirmed by her management team on Tuesday evening, reporting that she was in the ICU in critical condition at the time of her death. A representative of her team spoke about her struggling with addiction ahead of her alleged overdose as they told the Shade Room. She came to my house the last four days to get clean. She tried her best and did everything I could. I did everything I could to help her. She tried. So rest in peace to Enchanting passes away at the age of Damn. 26 young so girl. Young, bro. Damn. Um, I'm going to play some, I'm gonna, I, I want to play Charleston White's reaction to this. I know it's going to be a little controversial, but I'm, I'm playing this because I want to see, I want to get people's uh, opinions on this, on what, what you think about this. So let me, uh, let me go back to YouTube. This shouldn't be hard Damn. to watch. That shit's sad, bro. I ain't gonna lie. They say there's a curse on 1017, man. And they're they're saying it's all they're saying it's all Gucci fault, man. Uh I think I I don't know, but I just think there is a there's a conspiracy that these labels are <laughs> they got something to do with it because they be having insurance money on these artists, bro. Just saying. Right. That's true. Wait, 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 wait. Bro, if I was an insurance company, nigga, anytime an artist want insurance money, I'm taxing. <laughs> I'm taxing for that insurance, bro. Right. Yeah. Oh, he apologizes to Gucci Bay. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Gucci Bay the artist. There we go. We, we did an interview last year about uh, the new 1017. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, two days ago, when Chanted passed away, they say, they say allegedly was an overdose. Um, perks, fentanyl, fake perks, I don't know. Um, well, 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 I understand you have to say. <laughs> hey, shout out, to, shout out to why you having the police officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. This nigga's trolling it. Trolling at his finest. Oh, my God. This <laughs> nigga, man. <laughs> they were popping pills. It's in the music. I'm missing the music. Kodak Black said, I know the perk was fake, but I still ate it. <laughs> they know I'm the perks is fake, but they still eating it. But guess what? All the drug users and drug sellers know the 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 more pork, the, the, the more pork, higher. Right? So I remember. When I talked about this, man, probably two years ago, home, maybe a year, uh, I, I've been following her, her her success in the rap game because we took off around the same time. I noticed out of the 1017, only ones who really done something was Pooh Shiesty and Fujiano. 
So they seem to have more pushing and more backing behind the label. Homie, how is it that you can have stars this big and all of them go to jail? All of them. So I started watching that little girl. I know one thing, nigga, when you make it big, you gonna go get you a car. You at least go come back to the city, go hit up some club, take your friends out. The, the city go book. If you find him. Oh, man. You got to so, get that premium, my boy. Yeah, it just ran out. So he's talking about how they wasn't pushing our music and, and shit like that. I'm not going to go into he because he actually made a post where he was talking about the stuff that, you know, saying that she was a, you know, she, yeah. she was she humped her way to the top. So to speak, come on. That's so, facts. um, and, and then he's kind of being a little light with it. How he's saying it now. The strip club go high you over here. She did none of that. She did none of that, homie. No local strip club ever booked her. She had no parties, no birthday parties. Uh, she didn't do no features on no songs with nobody. Uh, the, she didn't have no songs at least being played on the radio. She didn't have nothing. So I'm wise enough to know what I'm looking at. I know her reputation and her persona before she got the Gucci. She was a fuck doll sex toy with her manager. They was known <laughs> for having freaky orgies. She with men and women, boys and girls. She was a man, she anything and anybody. She gave off a sexual aura. It's like she was just nothing but a Dog, everything about her was about sex, sex, sex. That's before she left the city. So, <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna go too far. Rest in peace to her. I'm not gonna go let him go too far. Yeah, to RP, her, but, um, but yeah, so what, what do you think about Do you think one, do you think that he was being too too harsh about what he said? Uh, or do you think that's something that needs to be said? And two, um, do you think do you think it's a curse on on ten seventeen? Do you think like okay he was let's a start, away from Gucci? First, let's start with the curse. Um, I know you asked it in the other way, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the curse, bro. Uh, yes, one hundred percent. Um, <laughs> I I've I don't I don't I wouldn't necessarily call it a curse though because a curse I'm, is I'm like sorry, you know before you before you ask it let, yeah. let me re, let me rephrase it to make it clear. Yeah. Do you think Gucci's at all responsible? Mm. for how these artists lives are turning out so so uh maybe i'm gonna say that i'm gonna say maybe um here's why i've heard um again it, it, it just just i'm just giving my opinion so don't beat me up i i've heard stories of these labels having huge um insurance policies on these artists and that's another reason why they you know i mean again i guess it's rap culture but a lot of times that's why they promote violence and drugs and all this other shit and we see people uh, again these labels cashing out on these insurance policies so so that's that so i'm gonna say maybe because i don't want to be like oh yes for sure 100 but yeah i'll say maybe he maybe he has something to do with it you never know nowadays bro we live in a wicked world i mean not that he has something to do with it but do you think that once he signs them like because like, Austin White, a little bit later on that the uh, that um interview he was speaking about how gucci man signs these people knowing that they have these addictions sure. and things like yeah, that yeah yeah so in other words encouraging yeah. them otherwise agreed you know what i mean so do you think it's his fault in that yeah. aspect and in that regard yes um and and if you want to put it in that regard i would say yeah because if i'm a, if i'm a label right if i own a label my artist's success is at my benefit my artist not dying, my artist being in a position that's healthy. You know, you know, everybody gonna do their little drugs or they gonna do their little lean and their alcohol, whatever. That's a different story. But when you when you sign in these artists and you see that maybe you might sign somebody that has a drug addiction or they have uh, uh, uh they they have beef with certain uh, people, I think you are you have to be conscious as a label owner to makes to assure that the, if you cared that their safety is your number one priority because them being successful and staying alive is at your best interest 
tops, right? I would hope so, or maybe not, you know. But um, yeah, I would say indirectly, he probably has something to do with it because maybe you're not at the end of the day, these people you're you're they're signed to you, and I'm sure you got a lot of control over their activities or their behavior to an extent. So maybe he could have prevented it. So I would say, yeah, right. Um, yeah, what was the I, other I question? Say, yeah, not necessarily. I, I guess I should say not necessarily his fault, but is he responsible? Because, like, I think his his responsibility lies into making sure that these kids and you have the money and the resources to do so. And if you're not going to do so, if you feel like you can't do so, I feel like you shouldn't even be signing these kids to in your all you're doing is really enhancing their lifestyle, enhancing their ability to go and access their their addiction. And uh, and ruin themselves. And if you're not really fo- if you don't have the time because, you know, you're focused on yourself, your own music, your own career still. Um, and you don't have the time to really hone in on these artists. And like how Charleston White said, your 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 two biggest artists are, are locked up. It's like. Then it's because I didn't see after they got locked up, it wasn't like he was doing a, uh, had a huge push for any of the other artists. So I think that that would have been the time that, you know, she probably would have needed. Um, not saying that it's a hundred percent his responsibility, but I think that when you take on that role, um, especially yeah. for a young, a young misguided youth, um, sure. of course she was a grown woman. She was 20, 26 years old, but still it's like, she's still growing. Um, so I think when you take on that, res- take on that, you take on that responsibility of being like, yeah. I have to be responsible. So, and uh, 100%, you know, I give you so an example. I, I think you did pay for the funeral though. I give you an example, uh, uh, Meek Mills and Lil Snoop. Uh, right. That little nigga was signed to you, and as his, you know, being being that you are responsible to to him toward in the sense of he signed to you. There's no way that you shouldn't have told this little nigga not to go to his hood shooting dice. Like you know better, you won't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't go to your because you know better. So you, I I feel like that was a a, a miss. Uh, that was a negligent judgment on Meek Mills' part. And I feel like it's the same thing here um, as far as uh, the Gucci man. Like, you, you know, you got to be knowing what your artist is doing because I, I feel like when you're signed, these are almost like your employees, but maybe even to a more extent because it's not like, you know, when you clock out, you're you're no longer responsible with that employer. This is different. Like, this is when you sign to somebody during that whole term, that's like a 24-7 responsibility until that contract is up. You know what I'm saying? So, imagine imagine these record labels start piss testing. <laughs> they are. Ah, oh, man, it's over, bro. Nigga, everybody yeah, getting fired. Like, being in, like the actual <laughs> workforce yeah, like, and right, actually right. say, no, nah, y'all niggas got to oh, take. God. Y'all niggas got to, you know. How many hey, how many man. niggas want to be rappers anymore if they did that? Hey, <laughs> that I would s- salute to any uh label who 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 would do some shit like that because I think they that would, would never do it because a lot of them mean, yeah they wouldn't because a lot of them yeah. use the drugs as a form of creativity. They, yeah, so yeah, they probably yeah. <laughs> well, we, we probably wouldn't get the, the public probably wouldn't get the real results. You know what I mean? If they did do that, but I think that yeah. would be crazy if they you know what I mean? Like they made a requirement like look. If you're going to be, you know, and maybe not necessarily like just, you know, piss test them on like everything. Like, you know, you say like weed or whatever, like just certain things like you can't be doing this shit that I know is going to or that I really feel like is going to fuck your your career up or, or fuck right. up my situation. So if we test you and you have this shit in your system, we we're cutting you from the label. I, and maybe, you know, you, you probably got some of the, uh, you know, some of the uh, execs that are actually doing that on the on the low with some people. You never know. Yeah. I know a lot of these niggas got POs and shit, so I know they have to do that anyway. But um, in her situation, that wasn't the case. So rest in peace to her, man. That's uh, rest in peace to Enchanting. Um, yeah. And man, I don't know, man. Y'all need to steer clear of ten seventeen, man. Let me, let me say one last, thing, one last thing. One last thing. She don't give a damn, man. Gucci, whether we say he he gives a damn shit, he don't give a damn. Let me let me say one last yeah. thing, bro. I just feel like. Another another reason that plays into this, aside from Gucci Mane being responsible for the label, is the culture. It's normalized to be drugged up and perked up and coked up. And, like, niggas is saying this shit in their lyrics, glorifying it, making it seem like it's okay. And I think that plays a part into it, too. It's, it's normal. Like, uh, like, somebody will see you. Like, there was an interview I watched where a nigga was perked up. Like, literally in the middle of the interview, he was like, you got any you got any you got any perks like or something oh, like that. Yeah, seen that you, yeah. you seen that so 
it, it's normal, bro. So you might see some w- w- what we would consider red flags, but for them, that's just everyday life. So I think that plays a part too. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's wild, man. Rest in peace to her, man. Rest in peace to Love and Chance. Uh, if you if you got a drug addiction, man, try to get clean, man. I just want to say thank you for watching the entire video. If you like what you just saw, click here for the full show or click here for another clip. Peace.